Oh, right, y'all, so I'm starting with 3.5 um, systems of equations and three variables. All right, so before I do systems with three variables, we're going to look at systems with two variables um, to get you back in practice, and then we'll step into the systems of three variables. All righty, so to solve these systems, I'm going to use what we call the elimination method. So the idea with the elimination method All right, y'all hang on a second. Or is anyone able to hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I had one saying they couldn't hear me, so but y'all are good? Okay. So when we use this elimination method, we try to eliminate a variable by adding the equations together. So we try to eliminate the variables by adding the equations together. Also, when I'm using elimination method, if needed, I can change any of my equations by multiplying everybody by the same number. So if needed, we can change one or both of the equations by multiplication. Okay, so doing this, we eliminate one of those variables and then we back substitute to find the other variable. So once we have a variable solved, we then back substitute to find the other variable. Okay, so those are the steps I'm going to be using on this one. So let me start us out. Now, when you got two variables, the answers are in the form of an ordered pair. So I'll solve my X, solve for my Y, and then write that answer as an ordered pair with parentheses, okay? So y'all, let's start one of these. We're going to solve by elimination. So I'm not going to lie. These problems are a little longer than we've been doing, especially when I got three variables, okay? So let's start this one off. I got a 5X plus 6Y equals negative 33. 7X minus 6y equals a negative 75. So there's my system of two equations. Now, the main thing you got to make sure, make sure each, question, each equation is in the right order. You want your x's in the first column, the y's in the next column, and then on the other side are equals, you want these answers in the same column. So, y'all, let me show you this one. Now, this one, they're being nice. 
I can tell which elim which variable I'm going to eliminate right off the bat. If you notice, I got a positive six y here, negative six y here. I'm going to add these equations together. Those y's are going to eliminate. So for this one, I'm going to eliminate the y. And all we're going to do is add these two rows together. So 5x's plus 7x's will give you 12x. The 6y, negative 6y cancel. And on the other side, let's see, that's going to be what a negative 108. So I eliminated the y variable. At this point, all I have is the x variable left. So we're going to solve this little equation for the x. Once we get that answer, we're going to plug the x into either one of these two equations and then solve it for the y. So that'll be the back substitution part. So y'all right here, 12x equals negative 108. To solve that for the x, I'm going to divide both sides by 12. So x is going to be a negative. All right, y'all, so let's see what that's going to give me. 108 divided by 12. I think it's 9. And what would you get, 9? Negative 9 or 9. Negative 9, there you go. Yeah, so unlike science made that a negative, so good job. So now that we know the x is negative 9, I'm, I can plug it into either one of these equations. So I'm just going to back substitute it into that first equation because that one looks easier to me. So I know my X is negative nine. So I got five times negative nine plus six Y equals negative 33. You know, since I know what my X is, when I plug it in, the only variable I got left to solve for now is that Y. So let's play with this and get that y. So nine, uh, 5 and negative 9 give you negative 45 plus 6y equals negative 33. We need to get to 6y by itself, so we're going to add 45 to both sides. So that cancels. I got my 6y. 45 and negative 33 give us 12. And y'all, the last step now, divide both sides by six. So I now know my y equals two. So in math lab, we got to put the x first, which is negative nine. My y value was two. And remember, it has to be in parentheses in the answers, okay? Now, if you wanted to, you could check that by putting the negative nine in for the X, two in for the Y. So negative nine times five is negative 45. If I put a two in for the Y, six times two is 12. Negative 45 plus 12 equals negative 33. So hopefully these are bringing back memories from your past. All right, questions on that? All right, y'all, so turn in the page for our next one. All right, let me let someone in real quick. All right, y'all, same thing. I'm going to solve by the elimination method. 8x minus 9y equals 24.5. 7y minus 2x equals 
negative 8.5. All right, y'all, so notice the first thing we got to do on this one, if you notice, I got X's here, Y's on the bottom. So this second equation is out of order. We got to get all the X's in the column, all the Y's in the column, and then all of our answers. So what I'm going to do is rearrange the second equation. So the first one will stay 8X minus 9y equals 24.5. Rearranging this one will give me a negative 2x plus my 7y equals a negative 8.5. So now I got my x's in the column, my y's in the column, and my answer's in the column. So y'all, we got to figure out which one of these variables, the X's or the Y's, which one of those would be easier for me to eliminate? Well, as it stands, nobody's eliminating. So I'm going to change one of these rows so that I can get a variable to eliminate. So y'all, let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to eliminate the X's. Now, to eliminate the x, since that's a positive 8x, I'm going to multiply this second equation by whatever number it takes to turn that negative 2x into a negative 8x. So that means I'm going to multiply second equation by 4 because that'll give me a negative 8x there, and then that will eliminate. So let me write my first equation down. 8x minus 9y equals 24.5. Now, everybody on the second equation has to be multiplied by the 4. So negative 2 times 4 gives you negative 8x plus... 7 times 4 is 28y. And then let's see, I got what? A negative 8.5 times 4 gives me a negative 34. I have a question. Uh-huh. I had missed where the 4 came in at. Okay. So the reason I have this 4 here, if you notice these two equations, when I add them, nothing's going to cancel. My, right. eight, my eight and negative two would give me six. Negative nine and seven would give me negative two. So I was looking at which one of these variables I thought would be easiest to eliminate. So I picked the X's because right here I had a positive eight X and I knew I could multiply this negative two by that four to make that a negative eight X. So I was just trying to figure out what number I could use to eliminate some of these variables. Okay. Now, it would have been a lot harder if I'd have picked the Y's because this one had a negative nine, this one had a seven. So I would have had to change both of them rows to get that Y to cancel. So okay. we was looking at our X's because those were probably going to be the easiest. So now what happened when we multiplied everybody by that four, I now have an 8x and a negative 8x. Those cancel. Negative 9 and 28y give you a 19y. And then let's see what we got. We got 24.5 minus 34. So that gives me a negative 9.5. So we've eliminated the X's. All that's left is the Y. So now we can solve this for that Y by dividing both sides by the 19. So 
So y'all, let's see what we get. Negative 19, uh, negative 9.5 divided by my 19 is going to give me a negative 0 0.5. So now that we know what this y equals, I can go to any of these equations and plug in for the y and get my x value. So y'all, I'm just going to plug it right back into that first equation. So here I'm going to back substitute. So I got 8x minus 9 times my y, which was a negative 0 0.5, all of that's going to equal 24.5. Now, y'all, you can pick either one of those equations when you do that back substitution. It don't matter. All right, so let's see what that gives me. That negative 0 0.5 times that negative 9 gives me a 4.5, and that's now positive because, remember, negative times negative. And that's going to equal 24.5. So our next step, get the 8x by itself. So we're going to subtract 4.5 from both sides. So y'all, that brings my 8x down. That cancels. 24.5 minus 4.5 leaves us with a 20. All right, y'all, my last step, divide both sides by eight. So the eights cancel, I get X equals. So let's see what 20 divided by eight is. That's going to give me a positive 2.5. Now on this problem, since they gave me decimals, I'm going to leave my answer as decimals. All right, so it's an ordered pair for the answers. The X was 2.5. The Y value was a negative 0 0.5. So that's your trick on these. Just eliminate a variable. And then solve for the other one by back substitution. So questions on that. All right, y'all, so moving on. So now we're going to look at systems of three variables. So to use the two variables to get you warmed up for this, okay? So a system of three variables... The equations will look something like this. X plus Y plus Z equals some number A. But notice you got X's, Y's, and Z's equal to your answer on these, okay? And these answers come in the form of what we call ordered triples. You'll have your X, your Y, and your Z. So we call these ordered triples. So two variables was ordered pairs. Three variables gives you an ordered triple for those answers, okay? So we're gonna play with one of these. These are a little trickier. And y'all, once I show you one of these, I'm going to show you the calculator how to do these. So let's play with this. We're going to solve X plus Y plus Z equals negative one. That's my first equation. Now, when you got three variables, you need three equations. Well, go when I had two variables, I had two equations. All right, y'all, next row is a 2x plus 5y plus 2z 
equals negative 11. The last row is a negative X plus 8Y minus 3Z equals negative 24. So there's your three equations. Now, I label these equations like that's equation one, equation two, and equation three. So I just number them because these take a little bit more work, okay, y'all? Because we got to turn this three by four system into what we did while ago, which was a two by three system. So let me show you. I'm going to go through here. I think I'm going to eliminate the X's. So I'm going to eliminate the X as my first variable. You know, the reason I was looking at that, because if I add one and three right off the bat, those ones will cancel the X. And then I got to come back and use the second row with either one of these rows to cancel the X again. So you got to use all three equations, but two at a time to cancel that variable. So y'all watch what I'm talking about. First of all, I'm going to add row one and three. I'm going to add row one, one and three to eliminate that X. So row one was X plus y plus z equal negative one. Row three was a negative x plus an eight y minus three z equal negative 24. Okay, so I added my row one and row three. But y'all look what happens. X and negative x cancels. 1y and 8y give you 9y. 1 and negative 3 give you negative 2z. Negative 1, negative 24 give you negative 25. This I'm going to call my equation 4. Because in a little bit, I'll have an equation 4. I'm about to get an equation five. Well, equation four and five are going to make a two variable system. All righty, check this out. We used row one and three. Now we have to use row two in either one of these other equations. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take row two, which is two X. I'm going to change row three so that these X's will cancel that two X. So y'all, what would I multiply row three by if I want to cancel the two X? Negative two. Um, and y'all, it don't even have to be a negative two. It's just got to be a two because I've already got the negative. So good job. So what we'll do, we're going to multiply row three by two, and then we're gonna add to row two. All right, y'all, so let's multiply row three by two, so you're gonna get a negative two X plus 16Y minus six Z will equal a negative 48. So that's my new row three. Bringing row two down, we have 2x plus 5y plus 2z equal negative 11. But y'all look, what happened? The x is canceled like we needed. So we got 16 and 5, that's 21y. Negative 6 and 2 give me negative 4z. Negative 48 and negative 11 give us a negative 59.
This new row I just made is going to be row five. But y'all look at this. All I got is Y's and Z's on row four. All I got is Y's and Z's in row five. So we put row four and five together now. 9Y minus 2Z equals negative 25. Row five was 21Y minus 4Z equaled negative 59. So now we got the two by three equations like we did on the first few examples. So now y'all, here's where I eliminated the X's up here. We need to pick one of these two variables that we want to eliminate. So which one looks easier, the, the Y's or the Z's? Z. Definitely the Z's, I'm with you. So I got a negative two Z here and a negative four Z here. What can I multiply row four by to cancel these Z's? Two. Oh, you're so close. Because remember two would make that a negative four. And this was oh, a negative four, negative so two. I'll multiply that by a. Negative two. Negative two, there you go. Because y'all remember, you got to get them signs to be opposite when they cancel, okay? So we'll multiply this row by negative two. So my new row four will be negative 18y. Negative two, negative two, make that a positive 4z. Negative two times negative 25 is a positive 50. I didn't have to change row five. So row five is going to be 21y minus 4z equals a negative 59. All right, good job, y'all, because look, there goes your z's, they're gone. So negative 18 and 21, give me 3y. 50 minus 59 gives me a negative nine so y'all look at that we're down to one variable that we can now solve for so i'm gonna solve for the y by dividing both sides by three and i now know that my y is a negative three so guess what now we start back substituting Y'all didn't think we could do problems that took us a whole page, did you? But these are probably the longest problems we'll do all year long. So here's the thing. Since I know y is negative three, I got to plug the y into one of these two equations and solve for the z. Once I know what my y and z both are, I'll plug those into one of my original three equations and go after the x. So let's see, I'm just going to plug them into equation four. So I got nine times y, which is negative three, minus two z has to equal a negative 25. All right, nine times negative three is negative 27, minus my two z equals negative 25. Here y'all want to add 27. And y'all look, I now have negative 2z equals a positive 2. Divide both sides by negative 2. So y'all, that cancels, and I got my z. 2 divided by negative 2 will give me a negative 1. So I know my y is negative 3. My Z is negative one. So for the last variable, I'm going to back substitute. 
I know that Z was negative one, Y is negative three. And y'all, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plug them right back into that very first equation. So I had an X plus my Y, which is negative three. So that was negative three for the Y. My Z was negative one. All that has to equal negative one. So I'm just sort of plugging mine back into the very first equation. Got like terms on the left side. Negative three, negative one, give you negative four. Equal to our negative one. And y'all finally add four to both sides. And we get X equals three. So remember, these have to be in the form of an ordered pair. X was three. Y was negative three. And my Z was negative one. So y'all, the three variable equations are very, very tricky. So here's a question. I'm about to show y'all a nice, easy way to do these on that calculator. So do y'all got your calculator? Any of y'all using calculators? Because I can do them all by hand. Yes. Okay. I got that. Uh -huh. Now, if you don't have a physical TI-83, TI-84, Go to your phone app store and download the app. They got apps that are free with these calculators, okay? So let me write this again. X plus Y plus Z equals negative one. Two X plus five Y plus two Z was a negative 11. A negative X plus eight Y minus three Z equals a negative 24. Now, I'm gonna use what's called the matrix on the calculator to solve these. Now, when I use the matrix, I don't put in the letters, I only put in the numbers for each row. So that's a one X, so I'd put a one in, that's a one Y, I'd put a one for the Y, one for the Z, and then my negative one. Next row, I'm going to put in a two, five, two, negative 11. So notice I'm just writing the coefficients. The third row is going to be a negative one, eight, negative three, and negative 24. All right, so these are the numbers we're going to put in that represent this equations. So y'all, I'm about to share my calculator screen with you. So like I said, you could use this TI-84CE if you got the t older TI-84 pluses. We can use those also. Everything's going to be the same. Now, look on the left side. Oh, let's see. You got the blue button, the green button. Under that is a math button. But we're looking at the one under that where that X negative one is. You see right above it, it says matrix in blue. That's where all these matrices can be solved at. So to get the matrix, since it's in blue, you hit the second blue button and then that X negative one button, it pulls up these matrices. So, you don't, I'm just going to click on A. I always just hit, uh, so you see the top row says names, math, and edit. Since we're wanting to put our matrix into the calculator, we're going to arrow over to edit and hit enter. Now, we got a three by four matrix because that right there wants to know how many rows you got. We got three rows of equations, and then you would hit enter. 
And the next one is for how many columns do you got? Well, we got four columns of numbers. So we would put our four and enter. All these equations that have three variables are going to be three times four on that section. Now, the next step is to come put all my numbers in. So remember, my first one had a one enter. My next one had a one enter. Then I had a one enter. And then I had a negative one for the first answer. So that row represents one X, one Y, one Z equals negative one. The second row, I had a two for the X. Now notice you got to hit enter every time on these. I had a five for the Y enter. I had a two for the Z enter. And then that answer was negative 11 and enter. So now my third row will be negative one for the X, eight for the Y, negative three for the Z, and then negative 24 for that answer and enter. Once we got all of our numbers entered into the matrix, we're gonna quit that screen by hitting second mode. So our calculator now thinks matrix A is all these numbers we just put in it. So now we want this calculator to give us the answer. So y'all, we're going to hit second matrix again. This time we're going to arrow over to the math column. So all the operations that you can do to a matrix are going to be found in that math column. And we're going to arrow down until we find R, R, E, F. So be careful. There's a R, E, F, but we want the next one, which is R, R, E, F. This R, R, E, F, when we hit enter, will come to the screen. So now this R, R, E, F, it reduces these matrix into the answers. But guess what? I got to get my matrix. So for the third time, you're going to hit second, X negative one for the matrix. And you're going to hit enter. Since we put our matrix in A, we just hit enter and it brings it on the screen. So now we're going to reduce matrix A. Y'all, when I hit enter, the right column of numbers will be my X, Y, and Z. So y'all watch this, let me hit enter. So the three is the X, under it the negative three is the Y, and the negative one is the Z. Remember, we'll go, we got three, negative three, and negative one for our answer. And you see how that one on the top row, the one's in place where the X's were? So that's how you got one X equal three. You come down to the second row, the one is where the Y is. So that means that the Y was the negative three. And then the last row, that one is where the Z was. So that means Z was the negative one. So y'all, uh, they're not too bad on that calculator if you can get the hang of it. Um, anybody don't have a calculator? So all y'all got calculators? So oh, that sounds good. Could you do another example on the calculator like sometime? Oh, I'm about to do one right now. Okay. Um, Because these matrices are the easiest way to do these problems. All right, y'all, 4X plus 3Y plus a Z equals negative 3. The second one will be X minus 3Y plus 2Z equals 5. 
And then the last one is 11x minus 2y plus 3z equals 12. So from a matrix, I'm going to put a 4, 3, 1, negative 3. Then I'm going to come back and do a 1, negative 3, 2, 5. Then I'll do 11, negative 2, 3, and 12. So remember, to get my matrix, I'm going to hit second, x negative 1. So that's how I'm going to get the matrix. All right, y'all, so let's go to my calculator. All right, I'm going to clear all this old stuff out. All right, so to get our matrix, we're going to hit second, x negative 1. I'm just going to hit enter on A again because it's all going to be 3 by 4s in this section. Whoops, my bad. Let me quit that and clear that. I'm going to hit second, x negative 1. I'm going to go to edit. So remember, the first thing we got to do is edit. So once I got edit highlighted, I'm going to hit enter. So it's still a three by four. So just hit enter on three, enter on the four, and get it down to where your numbers are coming in. So remember, on mine, I had a four for the X, enter. Three for the Y, enter. One for the Z, enter and then negative three for the first answer. It goes to the next row. I had a one for the X, enter. Negative three for the Y, enter. Two for the Z, enter. And then a five for that answer. Then the last row, I had 11 for the X's. Negative two for the Y, three for the Z, and then finally 12 for the answer. So I've got them entered all, these are entered. So now remember, we're just gonna quit the screen by hitting second mode. So the blue button and then the one right by it, hit enter. All right, so we got the matrix put into the calculator. Now we need to do those math operations. So I'm going to hit second, x negative one for my matrix. I'm going to arrow over to the math column. And then I'm going to go all the way down till I find R, R, E, F. Once I got R, R, E, F, I hit enter. And that brings it on the screen. So now we want to reduce our matrix so remember, for the third time, you're going to hit second, x negative 1. And I always put mine in A. So when you hit second, x negative 1 for this part, just hit enter. And now we have our matrix A that we're going to reduce. So y'all, my final step is hit enter. So. What's my X value? One. All right, Y value? Negative two. And then finally my Z value? Negative one. And y'all put them in parentheses and be done. All right, questions on that. Y'all want to see one more of those with that calculator? How did you come up with the X, Y, and Z yeah. with this screen? Do what now? How did you come up with the X, Y, and Z with this screen on the calculator? Oh, okay, because you remember my very first column of numbers was my X's? Yes. And then that second column of numbers going up and down was my Y's, and then the third one was my Z's. So you see the one in the very first column is on the first row? Yes. So since that one's in the first column, that's my X. And I look straight to the right side and the answer for that X was the one. 
So you okay. come to the second row. The only column that has a number is the second column has a one. Well, remember, that's the Y column. So that means that that one Y equals its answer on that row, which was negative two. Okay, I see. Uh-huh, and then that third row, that one was in the Z column. So that meant that the Z equaled that negative one. Um, but usually those will be in alphabetical order on the right side, just going down, go from your X to Y to the Z, okay? All right, y'all, so let me do one more of these by calculator in here. I'm going to do 5R minus S plus a T equals 23. 2R plus 2S minus 3T equals 12. And then an R minus 3S plus 2T will equal negative 3. So let me just make sure. Let me see what my stat's saying here. Yeah, so yeah, you um usually if you got mistakes on these, it's usually just a sign or something. Um so let's play with this one and see what we do, Michelle. Um so I got my R's, my S's, and my T's all in order. So I'm gonna go on my calculator and put these in. So y'all let me clear everything for us. All right, so second, x negative one, let's put in our numbers. So y'all, let me switch to the 84, and I'll show y'all the difference on these. All right, so now I'm on my CE, so I'm going to hit second, x negative one, go to edit, and hit enter. So remember, this is the three enter by four enter. Now, see, the newer 84 CEs, they give you all the spots you're going to need and shows it all on one screen. The 84 that I used while go, the older one, it don't put everything like on one screen. It sort of shows you three of the columns at once, but not all four of them. So let's see, we had five R, so that's going to be a five enter. Negative S is a negative one enter. 1T is a 1 enter. And then 23 was that answer and enter. The next row had 2R, so 2 enter. 2S is 2 enter. Negative 3T is negative 3 enter. And then 12 was that answer and enter. The last row had 1R, so 1 enter. Negative three S, so negative three enter. Two T, which will be a two enter. And then a negative three for that answer and enter. So all my numbers are in that matrix. So verify them if you got to. Five, negative one, one, 23. I should have two, two, negative three, 12. One, negative three, two, negative three. So I'm good, so I'm going to hit second mode and quit that screen. All right, so let's go get the REF stuff. So hit second, X negative one for the matrix. Arrow over to math. And then let's go all the way down to RREF. And then hit enter. All right, y'all, so I got my REF. Now I got to get the matrix by hitting second, X negative one for the third time. And then I'm just going to hit enter. So I now have my matrix I'm going to reduce. Y'all, once we hit enter, 
What are my three answers for my X, Y, and Z that y'all would put in? Five. Uh-huh. For the X, uh, uh -huh. the R. Okay. Four for the S. There you go. And two for the T. And two for the T. There you go. Put them things in parentheses and be done with them, okay? So y'all, these aren't bad. Um, they're tedious by hand, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so that's why we got technology these days for these long problems, okay? So let's get into this next section. Three I'm points. Sorry. Can you explain to me how you get the the R and the S and the T? Because I'm confused when when the numbers pull up on the screen on the calculator. I don't know how you get. Oh, okay. So let me. I'm sorry. Oh, that's no problem. All right. So you're seeing my calculator, right? Yes. So remember, the very first column of numbers for this one was the R's. Right. Well, there's only one one in that first column, right? Right. So where you see that one, go all the way to the right. What do you get? Oh, okay. The five, four, and two. I get it. There you go. And then see Sorry. that next, <laughs> uh, didn't see that second <laughs> row of equations. The one was in the second column. So that would have been where my S's were. And since there's only one um on the second row, you go all the way right, and that's where that four was, and then you do that with that T. Okay, thank you. Okay. So y'all, 3.6 is doing the same thing, except we say this is called solving applied problems. And when you see applied problems, that means word problems. All right, let me let one in real quick. All righty. So these are word problems doing what we've been doing, okay? So now I'm still going to use the calculator once I get the matrix. But the trick on the word problems is setting up that matrix so that you got your three equations. So y'all, here we go. In a triangle, A, B, C, the measure of angle B is 30 degrees more than three times the measure of angle A. Then it says the measure of angle C is 60 degrees more than the measure of angle A. They say this, find the measure of each angle. So y'all, the first thing we got to do is come up with our three equations. So let me start with this first one. It's telling me the measure of angle B is, so that's going to be a B equals 30 more than three times A. So that's going to be 30 plus three times A. Or you can do 3A plus 30. It don't matter, okay? As long as we got 30 more than three times A. That's one equation. The second equation, it tells me 
that the measure of angle C is, so that's going to be C equals 60 more than the measure of angle A. So that could be 60 plus A, or you could do A plus 60. But y'all, here's the issue on this problem. I've only got enough information in this paragraph for two equations. But remember, I need three equations. So what can y'all tell me about the angles of a triangle here? 30, 60, 90. Um, so you're really, really close. Um, but what do they all three add up to? 180. 180. So that's got to be my third equation. A plus B plus C all has to equal 180. So here's the issue on this one. Remember, I need all my A's in one column, my B's in a column, my C's in a column, all equal to the number. So y'all, you see this 3A on the first equation? That 3A needs to be on the left side over here. So if you have something on one side and want to move it to the other side, you change the sign of it. So since the 3A is positive on the right side, when I move it to the left side, it's going to be negative. So that's going to give me negative 3A plus my B equals the 30. Now I'm leaving space here for my C column, okay? But notice, all I did was put a 3A on this side and made it negative. So right here is the same thing. The A is on the wrong side. The A needs to be on the left side. So since I'm moving the A to the left side, it's going to become a negative A. But there's no B on this one. It's got a positive C here. And that one equals 60. So y'all following me? I'm just moving the A's over. So move 3A by making it negative on the other side. And then the same thing I did here, I made the A, I moved the, uh, it says more, it looks like move. And then I moved this A on the other side by making it negative, okay? Now the other row is already in order. We know that A, plus B plus C has to equal 180. So y'all guess what? At that point, I could go show, uh, put that in my calculator. So let me ask y'all this. Is anybody working these by hand? All right, so y'all really done that calculator, huh? Yes, I'm, I'm working them by hand. Okay, so if you're working them by hand, let me work this one by hand first, and then I'll show you what I would do on the calculator. Um, on the calculator where you don't have a C here, that would have to be a zero. And then on this row, you don't have a B, that would have to be a zero. Um, so here's the thing. By hand, I'm going to eliminate a variable. So y'all, what do you want me to eliminate first? A, B's, or C's? A. All right, so I'm gonna eliminate the A. And y'all, there ain't no right or wrong answer on that. You can eliminate any variable you want, okay? So I'm gonna eliminate the A. So look, I got my row one, row two, and row three. Right off the bat, if I add row two and three, I can eliminate those A's. So I'm going to add row two and row three. All right, row two was negative A plus a C equals 60. 
row three was an A plus a B plus a C equaled 180. Now, when I add these, I'll call this answer my row four. So y'all look at that. The A's cancel. I got a B left. C plus C is 2C. 60 and 180 give me 240. So that's my first equation of my two variable equations. Now, since I used row two and three that time, I now have to use row one with any of these rows. So y'all, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna add row one to row three. But what do I got to multiply row three by to get them A's to cancel? Well, row three is an A. Row one's a negative three A. So to get them to cancel, this row three has to have a three A here, right? So that means I'm going to multiply row three by three and then add to row one. All right, so if I multiply row three by three, I get a three A plus three B plus three C equals 540. Row one is a negative three A plus a B equaled 30. Now look at that, the A's canceled. 3B and 1B is 4B plus my 3C equals, that's gonna give me 570. That's now gonna be my equation five. So remember, now I'm gonna take equation four and put it with equation five and make me a two-variable system. And this one was what, a 4B plus 3C equaled 570. All y'all. I've got to figure out whether I want to eliminate the B's or the C's. And I tell you what, if you only want to change one row, the easiest one here would be the B. So y'all, let me ask y'all this. If I want to eliminate the B's, what am I going to multiply row four by? Negative four. Negative four, good job. All right, so I'm going to my page over. So I'm going to multiply that row by negative four. So let's see. Let me move my camera back up. So I'm going to multiply row four by negative four. Then I'm going to add to row five. So I'll multiply row four by negative four and that's row five. So that's going to give me a negative four B minus eight C equals a negative. Ooh, let me see what 240 times negative four is. That's negative 960. All right, row five stayed the same. 4B, so remember that's my new four and this is my five now. 4B plus 3C equaled 570. But y'all look at that. Those Bs are now going to cancel. Negative eight and three give you negative five C. Woo, let's see what that is. Uh, Negative 960 plus 570. Negative 390. So negative 390. All right, divide both sides by that negative five and see what we get.
So what are y'all getting? Uh, 70, 78. 78. There you go. So we now know what one of these angles is. Angle C is definitely 78. So y'all, let me bring these originals back. Since I know C is 78, I can plug it right here and get to A really quick. Right? So I'm going to back substitute into that equation where I know C equals 60 plus A. So I'm going to back substitute. And remember, back substitute, you can pick any of those equations you want. So I'm going to pick this one, which said C, which is 78, equals 60 plus my A. All right, so at this point, to solve that, I'm going to subtract 60 from both sides. So that's going to get my A by itself. So y'all, let's see, 78 minus 60, that looks like 18. So look at that. I know now two of my angles. I know what A and C are. So I can plug in for this A and get the B really quick. So I'm going to use that equation. So I'm going to back substitute for the last time. And I'm using the equation where my B equals 30 plus 3 times my A, which was 18. All right, y'all. So let's see. That's 30. 3 times 18 is 54. So y'all, looks like once we add that, we got our angle B. So let's see, 30 and 54, that's what, uh, 84. So this one will say angle A equals, angle B equals, and angle C equals. Now, y'all, if I want to know if I'm right or not, all three of these angles got to add up to 180. So let's see if that happens. 78 plus 18 plus 84, hit enter, equals 180. All right, y'all, so A was what, 18, B was 84, and then C was 78. So that's a word problem doing this. Now, If I was going to use the calculator, I would do this part right here. Once we got it all in the same columns. So let me show you what I would put in on this one, on that calculator. So I'm going to share that screen with you. Let me clear everything out. All right, so we're going to go to the matrix by hitting second, X negative one. And then I'm just going to go to edit and hit enter. And these are still three by fours. So you can hit enter, enter on that three and that four, okay? So remember, my first row was a negative three A. So that's going to be negative three, enter. One B, so that'd be one, enter. There was no Cs on the first row. So I hit zero, enter. And then that equaled 30 and enter the second row i had a negative a so that's negative one enter i had a zero for the b so zero enter and then a one for the c so one enter and then that answer equals 60. then my last row was a plus b plus c equals 180 so i got one enter one enter, one enter, and then my 180 for that answer. And enter. So all my numbers are in. So remember now we're going to quit the screen by hitting second mode. <clears throat> now to get the stuff to do the math work. So second X negative one for the matrix arrow right to edit, and then arrow down to R-R-E-F. 
Once we got our RRF, we're going to hit enter. Now we're going to go back into second X negative one for the third time. And once we do that, we're just going to hit enter to get our matrix A. Yo, there's my command I want it to do. So we're going to hit enter. And y'all look on the right side, angle A, which is the first column, is 18. Angle B in the second column on the second row gives me 84. And then angle C, the third column, third equation, I got a 78. All right, y'all, so questions on that so far? All righty, so let me do another one of these word problems just to sort of see how y'all would set this up. Um, oh, hell, let me do one like this. All righty, the sum of three numbers is 56. The difference of the largest and the smallest is 51. And then it says uh, the sum of the two smaller numbers is 13. Find the numbers. So I'm going to tell you what, when I make my equations, my first column will be my largest number, then my middle number, then my smallest number, and then that answer. So notice, the sum of three numbers is 56. Sum means addition. So your X plus your Y plus your Z is going to equal 56. But look here, it says the difference. Difference means subtraction. So it's saying the difference between this largest number and this smallest number is 51. So that means uh, X minus my Z equals 51. Okay, so large minus the smallest. How about this one? The sum of the two smaller numbers is 13. What would y'all put for that last equation if the sum of the two smaller numbers is 13? Y plus Z equals 13. Perfect. And y'all, now we have our matrix. So I'm going to go put in a 1, 1, 1, 56, a 1, 0, negative 1, 51, and then I'll do a 0, 1, 1, 13. And then if you notice, if I was solving this in my hand, I would solve it just like I did the triangles because remember, these were missing places just like that one. And they'll work out the same exact way. All right, so let's go see what our numbers are, y'all. So we're going to go to our calculator. Let me clear everything off. All right, go to the matrix, second, X negative one. Go to edit and enter. 
All right, it's still a three by four. And all of these in, in uh, this section will be three by fours. So we got a one, X, one Y, one Z equal 56. So my largest number, middle number, smallest number, all added up to 56. Then I had a one for my largest number, zero for the middle number, and then a negative one for my smallest number, and that equaled 51. All right, the last row was the two smallest numbers, so the largest number was zero on that row. Then I had a one for the middle, one for the smallest, and that equaled 13. All right, y'all, so there's our matrix set in just like we wrote it up. So we're going to quit that screen. And now we're going to make it do some math for us. So second x negative one, go to math and arrow down to R R E F. Enter. Go grab our matrix by hitting second x negative one and hitting enter. All right, y'all. So let's see what them three numbers are. So let's see. The three numbers from largest to smallest. All right, y'all. So what is my largest number? 43. 43. Uh-huh. And then the next largest would 21. be? Uh-huh. And then your smallest then number? Negative eight. Negative eight. And y'all guess what? If you added all them up, that would equal 56 like we needed, okay? All right, so I'm going to play with one more to see how y'all would set this one up. So this one might be a little tricky, so let me go to my pad. Oh, y'all, let's take our little break real quick. Let's do our 10-minute break, and then we'll knock out some more of these, okay? So I'm showing about 118. So I'll see y'all about 128 or so. And I'm gonna stop our 11. recording. I'm gonna stop our recording for a second. All righty. So We'll knock out one more of these word problems and then we'll finish our last section for today. All right, so this one says, by eating one egg, one cupcake, one slice of pizza, A child consumes three hundred and one milligrams of cholesterol. Then it says, if the child eats three cupcakes and four slices of pizza he or she takes in 90 milligrams of cholesterol and then it says by eating two eggs and one cupcake. So two eggs and one cupcake, the child 
consumes 566 milligrams of cholesterol. So they want to know how much cholesterol is in each item. So let's see, my columns, I'm going to put my eggs in the first column, my cupcakes in the second column, my pizza in the third column, and then the answers will be their cholesterol. So the first one said one egg, one cupcake, one pizza. So one egg, one cupcake, one pizza. They got 301 milligrams of cholesterol. So you can make this like your X's, your Y's, and your Z's. But the second sentence said, if they eat three cupcakes, so three of my cupcakes and four slices of pizza, they're getting 90 milligrams of cholesterol. And y'all, for my third equation, two eggs, so it'll be two eggs, and one cupcake, so that'd be one Y. Um, they get 566 milligrams of cholesterol. Now remember, on the calculator, I'm gonna put a zero for the eggs and a zero down here for the pizza. Um all righty, so let's go see how much cholesterol is in everything. I'm going to run to that calculator. Let me clear everything off. All right, y'all, so second matrix or second X negative one to get the matrix. Arrow over to edit and enter. All right, it's still a three by four. So I had one egg, one cupcake, one pizza. That was 301 milligrams. And enter. All right, this row had zero eggs, so that'll be zero enter. Three cupcakes, four slices of pizza. That gave me 90 milligrams of cholesterol. And y'all, the last row had two eggs, one cupcake, zero pizza, and that was 566. So I've got all my numbers entered. So remember, I'm going to quit the screen. Oh, so I got one on here. So let's see if they're right on this. All righty. So Michelle, we're about to check you. All right. So second, X negative one, go to math, and then arrow down all the way to R R E F. Enter. Go back now. Second, X negative one. Hit enter for your matrix. And let's see what we get. So y'all, the eggs. Oh, good job. Good job, Michelle, because I got 274 milligrams for my eggs. The second column was my cupcakes, which is 18. And then the third column was my pizza, which was nine. So it looks like eggs had a lot more cholesterol than the rest. So good job on that. So y'all, that's um, 3.5 and 3.6 are doing the same thing. Um, it's just that 3.6 is using word problems, okay? 
So now we get to finish up for today with 3.7, and that's systems of linear inequalities. So remember, inequalities is greater than, greater than or equals, less than, less than or equals. So we're looking at equations that deal with inequalities, okay? So, and we're just going to be graphing these kind of solutions. So when I'm graphing, There's two things I worry about. The first thing is what kind of line do I use when I'm graphing? Am I going to use a solid line or a dotted line? So y'all, here's what makes the difference. If it has equals under it, if it's less than or equals or greater than or equals, you're going to use a solid line when you're graphing. If it's less than or greater than, if it does not have the equals under it, then we're going to use the dotted line. Now, MATLAB by default will be on the solid line, but if you got to put your answer with a dotted line, you got to switch it on MATLAB, okay? And it'll have a solid line and then a dotted line under it. So that tells me what kind of line to use. The next thing I got to figure out is where do I shade my graph? Do I shade it above the line or do I shade it below the line? So if it's greater than or greater than and equal, so greater than, we're going to shade above the line. Whoops. We're going to shade above the line. Now, if it's less than or less than and equals, then I'm going to shade below the line. Because, y'all, everything that I shade means that those shaded areas are solutions to these equations, okay? So let me start you out with one. We're going to graph the inequality. We got y is greater than x minus 3. So this one's already solved. So what I'm going to do is get me two points. Since these are going to be line graphs, you need at least two points to graph it. And then we'll graph it over here. So I'm going to go out about five to start. All righty, so I can pick any two X values I want, remember. So I'm going to pick a zero for my X. So if I put a zero in for the X, zero minus three, that's going to give me negative three. And y'all, how about if I pick a one for my X? So remember, you can pick any numbers you want. But if I put a one in for the X, one minus three is negative two. So we're going to plot these two points. Zero, negative three will be straight down at negative three on the y-axis. I had one, negative two. So I'll go right to one and down two. So y'all, here's my first question. Do I want my line to be solid or dashed?
solid. Dashed. Yeah, because y'all look at this. All I got is a greater than. And remember up here, we said if it didn't have the equals under it, if it was less than or greater than, we're going to use the dash line. So you're going to come in here and dash it. So if you choose the dash line when you start, when you put these two points, it's going to draw that dash line through there for you. So the second question, am I going to shade this above the line or below the line? Above. Above the line, because remember, greater than shades above. So you're just going to come in here and shade this thing above the line. So what that means is anything that's in a shaded area makes this a true statement. Anything that's not shaded makes that a false statement. Anything on the line makes that a false statement since it does not have the equals. So y'all look at this point right here in the center. It's shaded. Zero greater than zero minus three. Well, zero is greater than negative three, so that's true. So. That's why all this area is shaded. Hey, have y'all ever shaded on your calculator? No. So y'all watch no. this. Y'all watch this. I'm going to go on my calculator and show you how you shade on it. Now, the calculator can't do the solid line and the dashed line, but it can do the shading for you. So let me go to my calculator. Let me clear everything out. So I'm going to go to Y equals. And I'm going to put in my X minus three. So I got my X minus three. Now, if I just hit graph, it would just draw the line and be done. But we want it to shade. So I'm going to show you how to shade on both calculators, OK? So on the new TI-84 CEs, arrow all the way left over there where that blue box is. So arrow left. Once I arrow left where that blue box is, I'm going to hit enter. And y'all, the new calculators bring up a little box like this. Blue is the color that it's going to shade in unless you change it to red, black, magenta. You can change it to any color. Now, I'm going to arrow down. Down here where it says line, let me arrow through these and show you what the options are. That right there, you see how that triangle is above? That shade's above. And this next one, where the triangle is on the bottom, that shade's below. So we was greater than, so I'm going to arrow through these until I get the triangle that's above. So that triangle above means I'm about to shade this above the line when I hit enter. So now it's putting that triangle above on the left side. So y'all, when I hit graph, this is going to shade in green on my calculator. And y'all, there you go. It's just like it looked on our paper. So let me show you the older calculators. They're a little different. So if you got a TI-84 plus, you're going to go to Y equals and put in our X minus three. Now on these older calculators, you don't get all them colors and stuff. So you're just going to arrow left until you get to the left side of that Y1. And just hit enter until we get that triangle that's above. So right there's a triangle above. So since that's blinking, I can now hit graph. And y'all look at that. It shades the same area above that line. So the TI-84 pluses, you just go to the left side of the Y equals and hit enter till you get the triangle. The 84 CEs, you go to the left and hit enter. And it brings up that little box for you. And then once you got the little box, you go through it and uh, click until you got your color you want and then the 
Get that above triangle or below. All right, y'all, so the same thing, graph inequality. So this time they're being a little meaner. They're giving me 2x minus 5y is less than or equal to a negative 15. So it's still going to be a line, but I got to solve this one for the y if I want to use a calculator or if I want to find me some points. So y'all, to solve this for the y, I'm going to move the 2x by subtracting 2x. So that brings me my negative 5y is less than or equal. So these are not like terms. So that's going to stay negative 15 minus 2x. Now, I need to make that a 1y. So I'm going to divide every single part of this by that negative 5. But y'all, here's the thing. What do you got to do when you divide an inequality by a negative number? You got to take that little inequality and flip it. So a less than or equals now becomes a greater than an equal. And then we're dividing everybody by a negative five. So remember, reverse the inequality. Since dividing by a negative number. All righty, now let's see what happens. Negative 5, negative 5 makes that a y greater than or equal. Negative 15 divided by negative 5 is a positive 3. Negative 2 divided by negative 5, that's going to become a positive but I can't do nothing with the two-fifths, so I'm going to leave that as a two-fifths and then my x. So now I would start picking my numbers. And y'all, if you're doing it on the calculator, just put the three plus two divided by five x in for your y1. Go left, shade it with the triangle above, hit graph, and it'll give you your picture. All right, y'all, so I'm going to use zero. Now, since I got a fraction, my second x value is going to be five. So if you put a zero in for the x, zero times two-fifths is zero. Zero plus three gives me a three. So my first point will be zero, three. Now, if I put the five in, Sort of like I did with that uh, Fahrenheit Celsius problem. Since this five matches this five, those cancel, turn it into a one. So that this now becomes three plus two times one, which is two. And then three plus two gives me five. So when my X is five, my Y is five. Now remember, if you're graphing this on a calculator, I'll show you. Um, let me pull my calculator real quick, and then I'll come back and graph this. So I had 3 plus 2 divided by 5, and then my x. Now, if you want to find points from the calculator to graph on MathLab, hit second graph. That pulls up your table. And see, if I go up, I can go where there's my zero three I had. And then if you notice down here is my five, five. Um, and you can get these negative numbers also. So negative five are to be the same as that one. Gives you a nice number. Um. Pick two numbers out of this table that you like to graph and then graph them in MATLAB, okay?
Now, going back to my pad. Now, we'll say this. So I got my two points. So I'm about to graph this. And in math lab, y'all, when you're in math lab and you want to shade, you'll see a little paint can looking thing over there. What you do in math lab to paint and shade it, you grab that paint can and then you drag it to the graph and put it above or below the line. Once you put it above or below the line, it'll shade it real quick. All righty. So let me get some points here. All right, so zero up three for my first point. Then I was right five and up five for my second point. All righty. Stalled or dotted line? Solid. So definitely solid because it's got that equals under it. So it's going to be a solid line coming across. Shade it above or below. Now, what you got to focus on is this equation right here where we have it solved. Above. Since that's greater than, it definitely will be above. And it'll shade through there. So let me go back to that calculator. So let me go back to my y equals. I had my equation in. So remember, I'm going to go left all the way and hit enter till I got the triangle above. I got that now. So I'm going to hit graph. And there you go. Looks like what we graphed. And y'all going to do that one more on the CE calculator. So let me clear that one out. We had three plus. Now remember, if you want it to look like a fraction, you can hit alpha y equals and enter. And that'll pull up the fraction. And you can put your two on top. Arrow down, put your five. Arrow right, and put your x. So if you want it to look exactly like you got on your paper, you can do that. Now, I'm going to go all the way left. Hit enter. All right, so this time, let me see. I want a different color. I'm going to do mine orange. It's already on shade above. So I'm just going to go down and hit OK. And then I'm going to hit graph. So mine should shade in orange this time. And there you go. Now, I will say this. If you want to reset it back, clear that out. Arrow all the way left and hit enter and then i'm just going to go down to the line and go left and get it back on the line and hit okay if you do that the next time you graph it it'll just do a line and it won't shade it okay it's only going to shade it when you use them triangles All right, y'all, so they're not too bad. It's just uh, playing with them and getting used to the solid line, dotted lines. So let me show you two special lines. X greater than negative seven. Anytime you got a single variable on a graph and it's the X, X equations, these produce vertical lines the y's will make horizontal lines so this graph will produce a vertical line so what you're going to do so i got to go out a little further on this one
Oh, and then let me get some negative numbers here. So what this graph means when you got X equals a number or that means that every single X value for all the points has to be negative seven. <clears throat> so y'all, these produce vertical lines. So what I do, my first point, I'm going to come over here to negative seven. And I'm going to put my first point at that negative seven. Now, to make that a vertical line, you're either going to go up or down one point. Once you go up or down and click it, it's going to make you a line. Now, here's my first question. Would this vertical line be solid or dotted? Dotted. So that's definitely going to be dotted. So make sure you choose the dotted line option on your math lab now here's the trick on this one do the x's get larger going right or would i shade it to the left and y'all y'all want to know a trick on the x's on the x to the right it does it points to the direction you shade when you got the x's so since that X is pointing right with that, all these values to the right are greater than. Now, the only thing, remember, the calculator does Y's. So this one you cannot do on the calculator because it's in X's, okay? Now, the one I'm about to do next, the Y one you can do on the calculator. But just remember, um, because remember, these... uh. These vertical lines are, if you're doing slope problems, those were the ones where you had the undefined slopes and all that, but we don't have to worry about that in here. So if this was X is greater than five, I came over here at five, put a dot, went right up and put another dot, drew my lines, and then shaded how I needed to. All right, y'all, let's see what we do here. Y. It's going to be less than or equal to a negative two. Y equations, when you don't have the X, these are going to produce horizontal lines. So that don't matter. That means it don't matter what the X value is, that Y value will always be negative two. So when I do the Y lines, I go to the Y axis and I find that negative two. So let's see on the Y, negative two is sitting right here. Now these are horizontal lines, so you can go right or left and put that second point. So I just either click left or click right, put my point, it's going to draw my line. So y'all, the first question, will this line be solid or dotted? Solid. All right, so we got a solid line shooting across here. Less than, going to shade above or below. Below. All right, so y'all would shade below my line and be done. So let's do that one on the calculator. So let me find that calculator. Because remember, it can do the... So I'm going to clear that out. So I'm clear there. So y less than or equal to negative two. I'm gonna go over here and put in my negative two. Then I'm gonna arrow left because that's just on the line, member. Hit enter. So let's see, this time I'm gonna do brown. Now remember this is less than, so I don't want the triangle above. I want the next one where the triangle's on the bottom. Go down to okay, hit enter. Oh, I thought I put in my negative two already. Maybe I didn't. So let me put negative two there. All 
All right, there's my negative two. I'm shading below. It's going to be brown. So when I hit graph, same thing we just did. Now, y'all look at this table. If you hit second graph and look at the table, look at every single one of them Y values. Every single Y value is negative two. Don't matter what these X's are, it's always going to be negative two for the Y's. And that's why they make those uh, horizontal lines on that, okay? All righty, y'all. So I got one more problem. In this one, we're going to graph the system of inequalities. So in a system, the solution is where the graphs overlap in the shading. So we're going to shade one line. We'll shade the other line. The point where they overlap is going to be the one we choose as our solution. So y'all, the system they're giving me, y is greater than or equal to x plus 4. The second equation is y less than or equal to 1 minus x. So I'm going to draw my graph here. And we don't have to go out very far with these little numbers. So I'm just going to go out to five. All righty, so for my first point, my first line, I need to get two points to draw me a line. And then for my second one, I need two points for this one. So for the first one, I'm going to use a zero and a one. Zero plus four is four. One plus four is five. So let's draw our first line. We got zero, four. And then we had one, five. So y'all on the first line, are y'all wanting me to use a solid line or a dotted line? Solid. Solid, there you go. All right, it's greater than, so I'm going to shade above that line. So I would come in and I would shade this thing above the line. That's my first line. So let's play with this second one. I'm going to use zero and one again. Put a zero in there. One minus zero is one. If I put a one in there, one minus one is zero. So my points on the second line are zero, one, and then one, zero. Second line, solid or dotted. Solid. All right, so that's a solid line coming through here. Does the second line shade above or below? Hello? Oh, I think you said it. I just couldn't hear you. Hello? Below. So below that line will be, so I'm going to shade it the other direction to see. So y'all, can y'all tell where my double shaded section is? My double shaded section is this section over here. So the only solution for this, and I'll show you how they got it into answers. 
So the only things they're showing on the answers are the double shaded areas. So based on what I got right here, A, B, C, or D? C. C. So you just choose the one that's got that section that represents your two shaded areas. Now y'all watch this one on the calculator. It's not bad. So let me hit that calculator real quick. I'm going to my Y equals. I'm going to clear that. So my first one was X plus four. And on that one, it was greater than. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to do, let's say, navy. I'm going to go down and click that until I got the triangle above. Click OK. Now I'm going to go down to Y2 and put my second line, which was 1 minus X. And then I'm going to go left. And let's see, I'm going to make that one. Oh, here, I'll use light blue. That one was less than, so we're going to arrow right till we got the triangle below. Go down and hit. Okay. So now when you're using your calculators, when you graph, you're looking for the double shaded area, which is on the left side, like we had on ours. Now, remember, y'all, if you um, when you clear these, so that you can graph later, um, go back over here to the y equals and put that back on your regular line. And then put OK. And then I will do that for this one too. I'm going to hit Enter and put that one back on a line. And hit OK. And Enter. Now, these older calculators, the 84 pluses, um, when you clear this out it automatically puts the triangle back as a line on it so this one i had an x plus four and then we'll go left and shade above all right then i'm gonna go down this one's going to shade below so let me get that to shade real quick so that's below, and then that equation was one minus X. All right, so let me hit graph. And then on this one, you can tell the double shaded area also. Only thing is it's not pretty and in color like the new CEs are. That's what that CE stands for is color enhanced. So y'all watch this, and when I hit clear on this one, the older calculators, you don't have to go in and reset everything it automatically defaults back to the line all righty y'all so that is the last material for your first test so what we're going to do next week um i'll probably do a little review with y'all monday for the first hour and then the second hour, we'll start getting into the second test material. I'm gonna open test one up Monday and it'll be due the next Sunday, which I think will be June 11th, if I ain't mistaken, might be the 10th, but it's either the 10th or the 11th, whatever that Sunday is. Um, And I will say this, uh, the test is exactly like that review quiz is. So get good on that review quiz before you hit my test. 
All right, so y'all got one request for, let me pull my math lab up. This is for support for 9.1 question two. So let me pull that up real quick. All right, so that was support 9.1. Okay, let me see. That was question two, all five parts. So let me share that screen. Oh, and what question was that a uh, question? Question two, okay. All right, so let me go to question two. Okay, so these want us to find the indicated outputs. So let's see, they're giving me f of x, equals 3x squared minus 2x. So first they want me to find f is zero. So let's go to my screen. So for f is zero, they want me to put a zero in for both of these x's. So I'm gonna have three times zero squared minus two times zero. All right, so using exponents first, zero squared, zero times zero is zero. Zero times three is a zero. Minus two times zero is zero. So y'all, for f is zero, I'm going to get a zero. So what you would do, you're going to come into math lab, put in your zero, and enter. Then you're going to want to know what is f of negative one? All right, so let's go work f of negative one. So for neg f of negative one, they want me to put a negative one in for each of my x's. So I got three times negative one squared minus two times negative one. So exponent first, so bring down that three. So y'all, negative one squared is negative one times negative one, which is a positive one. And then I'm bringing everything else down. So all I did was the exponent on the first step. Now I'm gonna multiply these two and then these two. So three times one gives me three. This negative two times this negative one makes that a positive two. And then y'all, three plus two gives us Five. So you would come back, put in a five for that second one, and then check that answer. So it's going to make us go through them one by one. F of two is next. All right, so F of two, I'm putting a two in for the X's. So I got three times two squared minus two times two. And y'all, the biggest mistake I get on these is people multiply before the exponent. But remember, PEMDAS means exponents go before multiplication. So you bring that three down. Two squared is two times two is four. All right, I'm bringing everybody else down. So on these problems, make sure you definitely start with that exponent. Now I can multiply three times four is 12, minus two times two is four. 12 minus four gives us the eight. So we're gonna go back and put in our eight. 
and check that answer. All right, let's see what they give us next. Oh, I've only got three parts on that one. Um, let me go back to my Zoom. Uh, da, 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 let's see. Uh, Okay, yeah, it was only those three parts. Um, someone's saying, I don't know how to shade on the calculator. So do you got a TI-84 plus or a TI-84 CE, Alicia? It's, it's a plus. It's a regular plus. So uh -huh. let, me go to, let me go to that real quick. So it should look like mine on the front end that I got showing right here. So let's say yeah. I want to shade uh, y is greater than x plus 4. So I'm going to put in my x plus 4 for my equation. Now to shade it, we're going to arrow left all the way to the left side of that y1. So see how my cursor is moving left? Now when, once I get to the left side of y1, that little line starts blinking. So since mine was greater than, I would hit enter until that gave me the triangle that's on top. Now, if it was less than, I would hit enter one more time and get the triangle that's blinking on the bottom. So let me go all the way through and get my triangle above again. So once you got that clicking for the, uh, oh man, it went too far. Let me get back on there. All right, I got my triangle above. Once I got that triangle clicking, I hit graph, and it throws a shade out. I got it. Mm -hmm. So, and that's all you do. And now, once once I clear this, though, once I clear it out, it goes back to the line. Okay, so you physically got to change that every time on the eighty four pluses to go above or below. Okay, I got it. All righty, y'all. Let me, I seen something else on that chat. Let me go in there real quick. Uh, so 2.1. So let me go look at 2.1 real quick. So 2.1 support. All right, so y'all should see some problems I got for 2.1. Are y'all seeing my 2.1 support? Yes. Okay. So, y'all, this first one um, wanted me to solve this for the Y. So let me write this problem down. I got 3X plus 9Y equals 27. And then let me see what the, I'm just going to go through some of these problems real quick. All right, then they just want us to do that. All right, so let's play with number one first. So I'm going to go to my pad. So remember, all I'm doing is solving this for the Y. I don't have to graph it, don't have to find no points or anything. That just wants you good at solving for the Y. So your first step, you want to get to 9y by itself. So I got to do something with that 3x to move it. What would y'all do to the 3x to move it to the other side? Subtract it. Okay, so I'm going to come in and subtract. So notice that eliminates the x's on the left side. All that's left is your 9y. And then remember, those aren't like terms. So that's just going to be 27 minus your 3x. Now, turn this 9y into a 1y. That's where we're going to come in. And since you're dividing, we got to divide every single part of this by that 9. 
So look what happens. The nine's cancel, giving me a one Y. 27 divided by nine is three minus. Now three won't divide by nine, but y'all, you gotta be able to simplify this and reduce it. So what does a three ninths reduce to? Negative one third. Okay. And then bring in my X. So what they did to reduce this, since three and nine both divide by three, we divided both those by three and got that one third. Um, but y'all, this is what math lab wants right here. So we would go put that thing in. Oh, look at that. I switched my problem up when I went back to it. But y'all seen what I did. So let me go to number two. <laughs> so they're telling you, you got an equation and two ordered pairs are given. They want me to show that both of them ordered pairs are solutions. And then I'm going to use the graph to find another solution. So if zero negative one is the solution of Y equals negative. So let me write that down. Zero negative one. And then what was my other point? One zero. My equation is Y equals X minus one. So where's my screen at? So let me ask you this. These are ordered pairs. Which one of these is the X? Which one's the Y? X is zero, Y is negative one. There you go. All these are going to have the X first and then the Y. So what they want me to do is on the first point, put the zero in for the X, the negative one for the Y. So that's going to give me negative one equals zero minus one. Well, if you work that right side, you get negative one equals negative one. That checks. So that means, yes, that is a solution. So then the second one to give me a one for the X and a zero for the Y. So I'm going to have zero equals X, which is one minus one. And y'all look at that. I get zero equals zero. That's true statement. So that is a yes. So first of all, you have to come back in here and tell them, yes, that one's a solution. Check that answer. And then tell them, yes, that one's a solution. And check that answer. Now, they want me to use them points to graph it. So I'm going to click to enlarge my graph. Click the line tool up here. Now the first point was zero, negative one. So you're going to go to zero and down to negative one and click it. The second point was one, zero. So go right one and stop and click it. So we got our graph, we saved that. And then it's going to make you check that. Then it says, use the graph to determine another solution. So they want to know, is negative three, negative four a solution? So y'all, I'm going to come up to my graph here. And I'm going to figure out, I'm going to go over here to negative three. And then I'm going to go down to negative four. That graph is going right through the point where negative three, negative four would be located. So since the graph goes to that point, you would put yes. Now, if they'd have gave me a point like say negative two zero, negative two zero would have been up here. It would not have hit the line, so that would have been a no. So is that making sense? Can you do like one more of those problems? And then it would check that. So let me see what my next one's popping up. So that was just graphing. So what I'm going to have to do here is hit similar exercise. Uh, did that give me the same one? X minus one, zero, negative one. Yeah, so. Oh, I wanted to do me another one like this. So let me. 
Let me miss it just to get another question, okay? I'm going to get it all the way to the graph, and so it'll... All right, zero, negative one, one, zero. All right, and then we said this one was yes on that, one, right? Oh, so they switched it. Let's see. So negative two. So it's still yes on that. All right, so. All right, here's a different one. So let me write this down. So y equals x minus six. They're giving me five negative one and one negative five. So we're going to check first whether those are solutions. If they're solutions, then we'll put yes. If they're not, we'll put no. So remember, x and y, x and y. So for the first y, I'm putting negative one. That's going to equal x, which is five minus six. All right, y'all, so I get negative one equals negative one, which checks. So that first point will be a yes. So let's check this one. They give me negative five for the y. That's going to equal x, which is one minus my six. So y'all working that right side, one minus six gives me negative five. So that one checks and it's a yes. So yeah, that's what you're doing for the first part is just plugging in the X and Y's for these and seeing if you get a true statement. So y'all, we got yes for both of those. So we're gonna put our yes and enter. Put our yes for the second one and check. So remember now it's going to make us graph it. So you grab the line tool, which is the second one on the top row. Go to five negative one first. So right five and down one. And if you notice the top right of that little yellow banner, it shows my point five negative one. So I'm going to hit enter. My next point was one negative five. So go right to one and down five. So I got my line. I'm going to save that. And you got to check that one first. Now, it wants to know, is three negative three a solution? So I got to go find where negative three, negative three is at. So I'm going to go right three and down three. But y'all notice when I do that, my point three, negative three is right on that line. If your point is on that line, then that is a yes. If your point don't end up on that line, you would put no. So you final check that and you're done. And y'all, this one just wants you to graph. We've done plenty of those. Pick two numbers, plot that thing and be done. So let me see what four is. Same thing, pick two numbers, plot them and be done. So let's play with that. Y equals negative X. So if Y is negative X, when X is one, Y would be negative one. So I'm gonna grab my line tool, go over to one, negative one. Ooh, that thing's touchy with these little lines. And then if I make my X two, negative two would be the Y value. So I would go to two, negative two, put my second point in and be done, okay? And then you'd save those. All right, let's see what five is. Same thing, you're picking two points and graphing. And remember, all these that have got the y equals, you can plug them on the calculator for verification. So that's another graph. Another graph. 
So let me do one of these with the fractions. Show you what I would do to this. So they're giving me y equals negative 5 thirds x plus a 2. All right, so I'm going to go work that in real quick. All right, then we'll graph it over here. So let me see what kind of numbers I get before I figure out my numbers here. Um, so, so but, butter, I'm not understanding. Let me go to you. Y'all hang on a second. I'm trying to do my chat real quick. Um, All right, y'all, so on this one, my first point I'm going to pick is zero. I always use zero when I'm graphing. So zero times negative five-thirds is zero. Zero plus two equals two. All right, now, since I got a fraction, I always try to cancel the fractions out. So my second X I'm going to pick is a three. So let me show you why I did that. So I got negative five-thirds times three plus two. So remember, these threes will now cancel, basically making that a one. So negative five times one is negative five plus two. So basically, if you can cancel these denominators out, it's just negative five plus two, which gives me negative three. All right, y'all, so let's see, I got zero, two, so I'm going to go up two on my y-axis for that one. This one was three, negative three, so I'm going to go right three and down three. So at that point, draw your line and be done. Okay, so... Um, so y'all in math lab, you just plot them points and be done with that one. So let me see what we got on here. Uh, all right, so that's those ones basically. So the tricky part on that was probably one and two, but y'all three through eight, you're just graphing them and being done. All right, so who's next? So, so Butter, what section you need a help in? Uh, yes, sir. I need help with the, I think the nine point, f with the one that we worked on yesterday, there was one problem that I wasn't able to do. Okay. So, so pull your nine one up for me. Okay. Sorry, it's going to take a second because my computer's loading. Okay. So y'all, while she's loading, anyone else got questions?
All righty, y'all. So let me stop this recording real quick.